All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of Yammy Noob. We are taking the Buell Hammerhead out on track. This is going to be an interesting one. Uh, perimeter brake, as you can see, one side, one big disc on one side of the bike here. Uh, fuel in frame, analog bike, cable throttle. This thing's going to be interesting. I've been wanting to ride one of these on track for a long time. This is kind of the last old school analog super bike you can buy brand new. Big shout out to Buell for sending me this bike to try out and enjoy for a couple of weeks. Been a lot of fun learning about this bike. Let's go take it on track. Let's talk a little bit about it. Let's try to set a hot lap and let's go enjoy. Hey folks, we've got brand new designs over at yammynoob.co. We've got some of the sickest motorcycle merch designs known to man. Go over to yammynoob.co, check out all the new designs we've got going on. 10% off on all of our merch for a limited time only. Go and get yourself a new t-shirt, one of our fresh new designs. Go support the show. We are on the Pirelli Diablo Rosso 2 tires. Uh, a reasonable track day tire. More of a sport spec tire, street sport tire. You know, it doesn't have a Harley motor anymore, but I'll tell you what, that gearbox is still pretty dang clunky. <laughs> Rolling out onto pit lane with the Buell here. This is my third session with it. What I like to do on these videos is uh, get myself acclimated with the motorcycle and then talk it through with you guys a little bit and tell you what I think of it. So we're gonna run a nice little warm-up lap, talk through how the bike feels a little bit, and then uh, go from there. The Buell has, if you can believe it, 20 levels of traction control. 20. I'm on TC3 uh, per the uh, sub-menu setting. It tells me that that is for a track with good dry conditions. Uh, and this track today does have good dry conditions. Nice amount of power out of the Buell here. Feeding it into that back tire, trying to build some heat in the front. Sure, it'll break it in a little bit. I like the fuel size. I think this motorcycle size really appropriately feels really good. I gotta say, when you when you jump on the brakes, I'm not super confident of the amount of stopping power that I have. She likes to fly though. Feeding her in, warming things up a little bit. It's a beautiful 63 degree day here in Decatur, Texas, where uh, we are here at Eagles Canyon Raceway. Cruising here, picking the bike up there. All right, feet to the back straight here. Ah, yeah, I, I have a lot of issues with the brakes. I'm not gonna lie. I just don't have the confidence the stopping power that I would like. Like, ah, going wide there. <laughs> I, I don't have the precision that I would expect from a modern superbike out of this thing. It's a little wild, it's a little hairy, it's a little old school, you know, because it is. This design is basically the same design that they had back in 2012. 2013 when they debuted this model the 1190rx carve a nice little v shape here pick it up off the apex down two gears float it in so yeah it feels like a big brawly old school super bike which some of you out there might enjoy you pick it up off the apex, you can feel the torque wanting to slide the bike a little bit. And it's a real animalistic feeling motorcycle. It reminds me a ton of the Ducati 1098. I had the pleasure of taking that motorcycle out here 
in 2021. And it was a ton of fun to ride. But I gotta say, I don't feel super confident. I don't feel very fast on this thing. But it's working. It is working, you can't deny. You point it where you want, you can hit an apex, you can trail it in. It's doing everything it needs to do. But not a whole lot more. <laughs> It's not surprising me, it's not feeling like I'm going to be able to really be surprised, but okay. Oh, we caught a false neutral, I think. Let's see, what gear are we in? Second gear? Yeah, we can be in there. That was scary. That's not where you want to catch a false neutral. A lot of movement out of this bike. You get on the brakes, the front end shakes and bucks a little bit. I don't feel super confident on this motorcycle, as I'm sure you guys can tell. Yeah, something about it is a little bit scary. Because it's a little unpredictable kind of feels like you don't really know what it's going to do. Alright, let's try to put in a faster lap. Boy, those brakes are fading already. not have confidence in the brakes at all. Definitely don't have confidence in these brakes, man. There we go, not bad. Yep. I could have gone for the fast there, but I don't trust these brakes at all. A lot of fade. Kind of scary feeling. Try to get around this gentleman at the little carousel area. Use our fuel powers. Got a nice little wheelie there. Well, not the banker lap I was looking for, but I guess we can get some time. Let's see if we can pass this guy here and then we'll go for another one. Oh my god, it doesn't stop. No, that's too scary. <laughs> this thing doesn't have brakes. It literally doesn't have brakes, man. It's already faded like crazy. I was pretty much at the bar with this thing. That is terrifying. I didn't know if I was going to make that corner or not. The brakes are fading like crazy. I can't trust this bike anymore. I'm gonna pit in. That is 
terrifying. <laughs> you do not want 185 horsepower and no brakes. Let's go ahead and pit out with the Buell because that is terrifying. <laughs> Guys, I straight up, I had, I didn't want to freak out on camera, but going into turn one when I passed that guy, I was grabbing, I shit you not, so much brake pressure that it was maxed out. I was at the lever and it wasn't, <laughs> wasn't doing much of anything. That was terrifying. <laughs> and not in a good way. Not in a good way. That is just genuinely scary. Okie dokie. Let's park up the Buell and let's discuss, shall we? So, this is a funny bike, man. Honestly, this is a this is a bizarre motorcycle. On the one hand, you've got this delicious twin cylinder engine that makes a ton of power. Feels really good. Feels properly solid to ride. Makes a lot of great power. On the other hand, this frame and something about it. You go for the brakes, shakes. I caught kind of a gnarly wheelie there. It, you know, it's old school. That's what I can tell you about it. This thing is old school and it feels old school. And those brakes, look, I don't, <laughs> look, I don't want to be that guy, but to me, for me, the way those felt are not acceptable. <laughs> Uh, perfectly fine for your average everyday street ride, that sort of thing. I think on track, um, it is a teensy bit scary to use. You get a lot of, a lot of squish factor. And hey, maybe they just need a flush. But to me, um, pretty unacceptable braking feel. They are direct lines though, which is cool. They go direct. But yeah, if you're going to have this much power and this much performance, you got to have brakes to back it up. And I really did not feel like that was working on the Buell. So for me, you know, if uh, Buell is watching this video, hopefully they are, I would address the brakes, man. I would try to figure out something that works a little bit better. Maybe just go conventional with it. Call it a day. Actually, wouldn't be that hard to mount up. Maybe, you know, get the, get the fork set up. Because these aren't even radially mounted. I mean, these are actually mounted on the out i mean I, I don't think they work correctly um but otherwise a good motorcycle like i said analog raw capable but yeah definitely in need of some chiseling some refinement uh i was not going particularly fast on this thing and i found it pretty difficult to try to push the envelope with it so that's going to be my ride review of the buell on track hope you guys enjoyed this one hope you had some fun and uh, I'll catch you in the next one. See you later. Keep watching Yammy Nerd.